S-A-C-T-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Johnny Green at his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Wahoo! <laughs> When next Wednesday comes along, look out for pocketbooks on strings, false alarms at the front door, and bricks under hats, because it will be April the 1st. Each one of us will have to take our share of fooling on April Fool's Day, but there's one thing nobody can ever fool you about, that day or any other day, and that's Jell-O. Because Jell-O has that extra rich fruit flavor put in by a secret process, and no other gelatin dessert has it. All you have to do is take one taste to know that here's the best gelatin dessert you ever tasted. Crammed with real fruit flavor, extra rich, twice as good. Jell-O tastes as delicious as the fresh ripe fruit itself. And Jell-O's six glowing colors have a real springtime beauty. Just be sure it is Jell-O that you ask for, and don't accept any substitutes. Always insist on the one and only genuine Jell-O. Welcome back to New York, that wandering boy, that prodigal son, that vagabond lover, Jack Benny. Ah, <laughs> oh, folks, what a reception. Gee, it's great to be back in New York again, and I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that I, uh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just lost for words. Gee, I, I don't know what to say. I... <laughs> I, uh, I... Uh, Go on, say it, Jack. Well, Jello again. <laughs> Why, Jack, you're trembling all over. No, just in New York. <laughs> but, Don, I didn't expect such a reception on my return here. The applause, the cheers, the flowers. What flowers? Here in my lapel. <laughs> well, uh, the audience seems to be glad that you're back, Jack. Now, tell us about your trip to Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Washington. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Don. There's nothing like traveling around the East. The scenery, the crowds, the industries, it's just fascinating. Well, uh, I hate to argue with the boss, but listen. What's the East got that the West hasn't got? Oh, that's right, Don. You're from Denver. I yeah. guess I started something. <laughs> but you must admit that you have no place out West like Niagara Falls. No, but we have the Grand Canyon. Yes, but after all, what can you do with a canyon? I mean, they're so empty, Don. Is that so? Say, it would take three Niagara Falls to fill one Grand Canyon. Well, it can't be so good if they want to fill it. <laughs> all right. All right, you got me on that one, Jack. But uh, go ahead now. What else have you got here in the East? What else he's asking? <laughs> well, Don, right here in New York, we have that great Central Park. And out West, we have Jellostone Park. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's, that, that's pronounced Yellowstone, Don, but oh, I can I see your point of view. Yes. Me. And don't overlook the beautiful eastern rivers, the Delaware, the Hudson, and the Mississippi. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Wait a minute. The Mississippi is out west. Oh, no, I won't concede that. The Mississippi is in the east. I still claim it's out west. Well, let's not fight about it. The Mississippi has two parts, the head and the mouth. I'll take the mouth, and you can have the head. No, I want the mouth. Gosh, what a silly argument. <laughs> hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. What's the matter with you? You look like you didn't win the sweepstakes. Oh, it isn't. It isn't that so much. But Don and I just had an argument. He wants the mouth of the Mississippi. That guy would kiss anybody. <laughs> Mary, do you think the scenery out west is better than in the east? Sure, Jack. I think the Panama Canal is wonderful. The Panama Canal is down south. I know, but it's good enough to be in Hollywood. Hmm. Say, Kenny, come here. We're getting no place tonight, and I know you will help us get there. Oh, you can count on me, Jack. I know, but point black, Kenny. Which do you like better, the east or the west? Well, Jack, I'm from California, and you know the climate out there is so marvelous you can raise anything. That's right. You're right there. My father's in a fruit-growing business out there. Oh, I didn't know that, Kenny. What does he raise? Orange juice. <laughs> That's a fine joke on an empty stomach. <laughs> Who told you to say that? I promise not to tell. Come on now, Kenny. Come on. Who told you to say that? Well, you must know, May West. <laughs> oh, then you do like West better than the East. Oh, I don't know. I never met Miss East. Hmm. <laughs> Mary. Mary. 
<laughs> Mary. Mary, what are you laughing at? Harold Lloyd in the Milky Way. <laughs> Harold Lloyd. Did you see it? No, but I heard it was funny. Oh. Right now, I'd give $10 to see Johnny Green. Here I am, and I can certainly use it. Can't take a joke. <laughs> Johnny, our hokum tonight deals with the East and the West. If you had your way, where would you live? Where you are, Jack. I like your apartment. Well, thanks, Johnny. It's some place, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, on a clear day, you can see the window. <laughs> what window? But really, Johnny, isn't my apartment beautiful? Did you notice the baby grand? Did I? How old is she? Two. Come here, Johnny. I'll tell you what she said this uh, morning. Yeah. Listen, I walk into her nursery, and she <laughs> says, Hello, Daddy. I want to tell you And if you it. walk into Jack's kitchen, you will find Jello in the icebox and all six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. <laughs> <laughs> No kidding, Jack. Did she really say that? Yeah. And what else do you think she said? What? Pay Johnny. by Johnny Green and his Eastern Californians. Say, that sounded swell, Johnny. Ah, music doth soothe the savage beast. Oh, thanks, Jack. I'm glad you liked it. Hmm. Of course, Johnny, I come, you know, I myself, I come from a family of musicians. Oh. You know, my father was quite musical. Huh? No, really? Yes, in fact, my father had a beard so long that he played a violin three years before he found out it was a cello. <laughs> But really, I am a lover of music. It's always been my ambition to hear... <laughs> Come in as usual. Mm, how do you do? I'd like to see the star of this program. Yes? yes. <laughs> Quiet, rat. <laughs> I'm the star. Jack Benny is the name. Are you Jack Benny? Yes, sir. That's funny. You don't look anything like your autograph. <laughs> Well, the profile is a little different. Uh, what do you want? Uh, I'm a violinist. Here's my card. Your card? Hmm. Agnes Bryant 90610. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's on the other side. Oh. Uh, uh, say, Jack. Yes, Johnny. Is that Bryant 9 or Bryant 5? Bryant 9. Is there anything else you want? Yeah, have you got a nickel? <laughs> hmm. Hey, that's the wrong card. I'm a violinist, and I'd like to get on this program. What's your name? Fritz Packard. You hear that, Johnny? Fritz Packard. Are you acquainted with Chrysler? Yes, we're stopping at the same garage. <laughs> that's funny. I knew you'd say that. Hmm, that's a nice that's a nice violin you have there. Is it a Stradivarius? What's that? I said, is it a Stradivarius? You'll have to pardon me. I can't hear very good. Well, how do you play the violin? By ear. Well, I'm sorry, young man, but Mr. Green has several fiddlers in his orchestra, and in an emergency, I play the violin myself. Why? <laughs> oh, just for pastime, I guess uh, Do you know Mendelssohn's Spring Song? What's the name of it? Humoret <laughs> I never heard of it What I'm looking for is a job Well, uh, where have you played before? At weddings Weddings? Well, yes. isn't that a good job? Yes, but it only lasts a minute I can't go on a honeymoon with him <laughs> Well, I guess you're right But listen, young fellow I don't think we can use you This is a comedy program A what? A comedy program Well, you can trust me It won't go any further I don't care how far it goes, it's no secret Well, don't get so All I want is a job Well, you'll have to see Johnny Green, our musical director What does he do? He's over there with a stick in his hand 
Well, I'm not afraid of him. Where is he? <laughs> right over there at the piano. Oh, that guy. Well, well, uh, hello, friends. <laughs> Hey, Jack, Jack, look who's here. Well, well, Slepperman, I didn't know it was you. Where'd you learn to speak English? In Hollywood. In Hollywood? Well. Yes, I'm in a moving picture for Paramount. It's called Fly the Special. Believe me, I'm a second sailor temple. <laughs> That's great. Well, what did you do, fly back here? I came by automobile. Oh, yeah? What kind of a car? One day a limousine, the next day a touring car, the next day a roadster. Oh, your thumb does look a little weather-beaten, yes. <laughs> Did you do any trucking? Sure, from Detroit to Cleveland. Hey, hey! <laughs> well, anyway, Schlepperman, I'm glad you're back. But tell me, what was this violin trick you were playing on? It? Well, it's the only way you can get into this studio. You've got to look like a musician. Well, can you play the violin? Of course. I even antagonize it. Mm. Here, let me show you. I'll give you a sample. All right, go ahead, Schlepp. What's the matter? Well, are you satisfied? I'm satisfied. Well, sing, can I live? <laughs> by Kenella Baker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to read a letter I received this morning from a woman in Constantinople, South Dakota, <laughs> regarding the plays we have been presenting on the Jell-O program. She says, Dear Mr. Benny, I am the mother of 12 children, eight of whom are living with me, and the other four listen to your program. <laughs> but we would all like to listen tonight, so why don't you give us a play that the children can enjoy? Something like Cinderella or The Little Glass Slipper. I know my kiddies would like that. Signed, yours very truly, Mrs. Dion Cantor. <laughs> See, 12 children. Wait, oh. uh, what do you think, um... <clears throat> What do you think of that, Mary? Can you imagine what people ask you to do nowadays, huh? Well, Jack, the customer's always right. I know, but Cinderella. Say, Johnny, do you know anything about Cinderella? 
If I did, I wouldn't talk. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, Wilson. Yes, Jack. Here's a lady who wants us to do Cinderella. What do you think? Well, uh, why not do it? It's easy, you know. It's a fairy tale. Yeah, I know. It's... Cinderella is the stepdaughter of a very aristocratic mother who has two daughters of her own. They all go to a ball at the royal palace given by the king. But they don't ask Cinderella as she has no clothes or social standing. The first reason is enough, I think. <laughs> but how, uh, how can we play it, Don? We haven't enough women in our cast, huh? Oh, Jack, I have an idea. Yeah? Why not make it three brothers? You could be the stepbrother, Cinder Allen. And... Cinder Allen? Mm hmm <laughs> and... Say, there's an idea, huh? And I'm Wilson... glad Freddie didn't think of that first, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and Wilson and Johnny could be the two mean, despicable brothers. Smart bit of casting, if you ask me. Huh? Well, what about Kenny Baker? Say, Kenny, what will you be? I'll be 21 next week. <laughs> well, I didn't have to ask him, you know. Well, anyway, madam, your children will get their wish. And this play, Cinder Allen, will go on immediately after the next number, which will be played by Johnny Green, while Kenny Baker sits down and writes himself a birthday card. Play, Johnny. <laughs> Green and his orchestra with Johnny at the piano. And now, folks, the theater is already packed for this great play of ours, Cinder Allen. And the show is about to start. Curtain. Music, John. <laughs> Cinder Allen? Cinder Allen, what are you doing there? Just cleaning the furnace, Mother. And I'm so tired. <laughs> well, hurry up, you little brat. There's other work for you to do. Yes, Mater. That stepbrother of ours is slower than molasses. And twice as sappy, the little tramp. <laughs> hmm, it's eight o'clock. Now, come on, you boys. Put on your best clothes. You know the king is giving a blowout at the royal palace tonight, and you're both invited. Okay, Ma. Ma. Oh, Mother, can I go to the palace, too? No, you're only a stepchild. <laughs> now, you help Donald and Jonathan with their clothes, then get downstairs with the rest of the ashes. All right, Mother. <laughs> Gee, I wish I could go to the dance now that I've learned how to swing it. <laughs> what, what in that, that suit? suit? Ha, 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 ha. You'd be a fine-looking sight to appear before the king. Yeah, you'd disgrace us all. You're too homely to go anyplace. I am not homely. I'm better looking than Lanny Ross, ain't I, Mary? No. Oh, well. Anyway, I'm not in the play yet. Oh, yes. Come on, boys. You must hurry or you'll be late for the ball. All, All right. right. Goodbye, Goodbye mother. mother. Goodbye, my son. Cinder Allen, get down in the cellar and feed the rats. 
Ah, woe is me. How I wish I could have gone to the palace tonight. Shut up! Now you get to work or I'll beat you two within an inch of your order. Stop! Don't you touch me. You may be my stepmother, but don't you come a stepfather. I'm going now, you little brat. And when I return, I want to find your work done. Oh, I am so unhappy. I wish I was Victor Hugo so I could be less miserable. <laughs> ah, woe is me. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Who are you, pray tell? <laughs> Sounds like the crime club program. <laughs> Boo hoo hoo. What are you crying for, young man? Oh, I wish. I wish. Boo hoo hoo hoo. Cut out that Crosby stuff and tell me what you wish. I wish I could go to the ball tonight. Then I shall see that you go. I am your fairy godfather. Mm, that's news to me. But I can't go in these clothes. What will the king and queen think of this shabby suit full of cinders? With one touch of this magic wand. You will become a Beau Brummer. Yes. <laughs> With one touch of this magic wand. And there you are. Oh. You are now Prince Charming. Oh, Godfather, I look just like Clark Gable. <laughs> yes, and you are dressed better than Carol Lombard. Thank you. Thank you for this lovely tuxedo and high silk hat. And have you noticed your slippers? Yes, Godfather. They're a little stiff. What are they made of? Glass. Oh, glass slippers. Isn't that wonderful? Now my feet can see where they're going. <laughs> but tell me, Godfather, how can I get to the palace? I have neither coach nor footman. I'll fix that. Bring me that table. The table, yes. Here you are, Dracula. <laughs> Now I shall touch it with my magic wand. <laughs> Presto! Oh, oh. oh, what a beautiful carriage. And look at the big red letters on the license plate. <laughs> but, Godfather, there are no horses to draw the carriage. I'll leave that to me. Go into the kitchen and fetch me six boxes of... You know what? <laughs> with that extra rich, fresh... I get you. Here you are, Sven Garlic. Now, uh, watch closely, and you shall have your horses. <laughs> Strawberry! <laughs> Raspberry! The cherry, orange, lemon, and lime! Oh, thank you. Thank you, Godfather. I'm so happy that I'm going to the palace after all and meet the princess. Yes, Cinder Allen, you are going. But remember one thing. You must leave the palace and be home before the clock strikes twelve. Or again, you will become a bum. Remember, you must be home by twelve. Yes, Godfather. Now, could you touch something else and turn it into ten bucks so I can take the princess out? <laughs> I was just going to touch you for ten bucks. <laughs> I knew we went too far with this play. Huh? But wait, how can I go? I have no chauffeur. I'll fix that, too. <laughs> oh, oh. Why, Kenny Baker, are you my chauffeur? Yes, that's what I get for hanging around. Now go, Cindy. And remember, you must be back by 12. Yes, yes. Goodbye, Godfather. <laughs> I'll see you, Mindy. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. Here you are, sir. The Roxy. I don't want the Roxy. I want the palace. And get there before the prices change. <laughs> yes, sir. You bet. The next scene finds Cinder Allen arriving at the Royal Palace where the ball is in full swing. Ah, princess, you dance divinely. Shall we stroll into the garden? What's out there? The moonlight. I don't want any. 
Uh, don't forget, Princess, the next dance is ours. All right, but it'll cost you a dime. <laughs> I wonder who that can be. All our invited guests are here. Well, why not bid him enter, Princess? Come in. Oh! oh. My, what a handsome man. I wonder who he can be. <laughs> Curses. With that guy around, we don't stand a chance with the princess. Uh, tell me who you are, you great, big, handsome brute. I won't tell. It's me, folks. You know, Cinderella. <laughs> but surely you will tell me I am the princess. Oh, don't bother with him. He's probably advertising something. <laughs> Go away, Jonathan. And you too, Donald. I'm going to dance with this baby. Say, what's your name, good looking? Jack Charming. I mean, Prince Benny. Oh, I don't know. Call me Toots. <laughs> you know, brother, there's something familiar about his face. Mm, he looks not unlike a master of ceremonies that we know. Princess, who are those royal punks? Oh, just a couple of my suitors, but it's you I love. <laughs> ah, Princess, shall we tackle the minuet? <laughs> okay, sailor, let's go. Ah, Princess, you are wonderful. You dance just like Ginger Rogers. And you dance like Fred Astaire. Well, I know enough steps to be Astaire. <laughs> Kiss me. Kiss me, my fair one. <laughs> oh, that guy is here again. Who's that? I don't know. He's been nice to me. Yes, and it's nearly 12 o'clock. And remember, Prince Charming, you must be home by the stroke of 12, or hallelujah, you're a bum! Ah, oh, my beloved, I must leave you now. I must be off. No, no, no. Yes, Princess, I must fly. The clock is striking 12. Why, are you afraid of those gongs? Yes, I'm an amateur prince. <laughs> What did I tell you? You wouldn't heed my warning. Look, look, again, I am in rags and tatters. I knew this dream couldn't last. Throw the bum out. Look, look, it's our stepbrother, Cinder Allen. I knew his face was familiar. But, Godfather, what happened to my beautiful tuxedo? I'll show you what happened to it. Horatio! Horatio! Yes, Mr. Godfather. <laughs> Tell him what happened to his clothes. Well, Princey, here's the law down. I rent out fancy suits for all kinds of dances and best grades. And Mr. Grandfather told me I should rent you this suit until 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> well, it's 12 o'clock. Here I am. I got the suit and thank you. A lack of day. A lack of day. You said it. And you, Princess, don't forget, please. I want that dress back in the morning. Oh, look, look. I still have my glass slippers. That reminds me. I want your socks back in the morning, too. And <laughs> play, Johnny. <laughs> I'm one of those people who believes there's a lot of pleasure to be had from something new and exciting to eat. If you agree, and I'll bet you do, I can tell you how to make a grand new dish. It's apricot cheese salad, a happy combination of apricots and lemon jello. Here's how to make it. Dissolve a package of lemon jello in a pint of warm water and chill until slightly thickened. Then add two and a half cups of canned apricots. Mold firm and turn out on crisp lettuce. Garnish with real mayonnaise and little squares of cream cheese. It's swell. Luscious apricots in a clear, shimmering mold of lemon jello. You'll like the color combination of pale yellow and apricot gold, and you'll go for the flavor combination in a big way. Jello tastes twice as good as ever before, so use it for salads as well as desserts, and you'll find it's twice as useful. Just be sure big red letters on the package. They spell Jello. The last number of the 27th program in the new Jell-O series, and we're with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Oh, Johnny. Uh, yes, Jack? I want to wish you good luck on your opening at the Paramount Theater Saturday. Well, thank you very much. And I hope you all liked our sketch, Cinder Allen. And the moral of our little play is, be it ever so humble... There's no clothes like your own. Good night, folks. <laughs> program were Awaken a Dream from the Motion Picture Desire and Love in Bloom from She Loves Me Not. This is the National Broadcasting...